This tutorial is about 3D map editing and we'll learn about uh, tools included in PixPlan to edit 3D maps. Because of the screen recording software, the 3D rendering you'll be seeing is not very smooth. If you run uh, PixPlan on its own, you'll find it uh, much more fluid. We'll be using a seamless texture which was previously tiled by PixPlan from an uh, original uh, brick photo from benclower.com. And uh, so we'll start by um, loading a texture, a previously tiled texture. It's a brick wall and um, from here we'll uh, extract the 3D maps by clicking the send to 3D maps button. And um, of course we could otherwise uh, load individual uh, 3D maps, displacement, normal, etc. But we'll just extract from this um, a brick wall texture. Okay, and the first uh, extract window to appear is the displacement um, from texture window. Um, you can see that the surface is uh, inverted. The mortar between the bricks is um, higher than the, than the brick uh, relief. So we just click the invert surface button and you can see that it now makes more sense. And um, we can uh, tune the surface scale, so uh, it, we can uh, select if we want more or less eye level detail, finer detail. Uh, this is perhaps a bit too much, and this is not bad. Let's add a little bit of uh, fine detail also. You can see if we zoom in that this slider adds okay so let's just add a little bit okay so let's continue now and the next one is the specular extraction window um, well uh, about the metallicness of course bricks and mortar don't have uh, don't have metallic reflections and uh, so let's just use non-metallic we could also use unsaturated we'll see later on um, more about this um, and uh, now about the shininess of course um, bricks are not very shine, shiny um, perhaps we should leave it at median mate probably would be better we'll see this one this one later on okay and now it's the ambient occlusion rendering from displacement so this is um, rendering uh, an ambient occlusion map from the displacement that we've just extracted um, okay so I guess uh, we'll probably deal with this one later and uh, let's just leave it as it is okay very well so this is the 3d maps uh, part of Pixplant and uh, you, you can see that there are two main sections this is this one at the left is the 3d preview area um, and this one at the right is the place where the editors are located and um, these editors uh, of course we'll later uh, see about them but um, you can recognize from this tab the, the common uh, suspects so to speak like displacement normal specular and uh, so let's see the 3d preview area well, you can uh, manipulate the model here, you can rotate it, you can change the light and uh, you can of course pan it, you can pan it around and of course zoom in and zoom out. And um, so um, you can enable or disable the rendering of maps, for instance, uh, let's remove ambient occlusion which by the way is a bit too uh, heavy as you can see so let's deal with it later on and remove it now it's no longer being rendered or we could remove diffuse the diffuse map you can see here the the specular map being rendered the reflections being rendered anyway later on we'll see more about this and um, another setting you have in the 3d preview area is the quality and um, of course this is the usual trade-off between um, higher quality and slower rendering 
or lower quality and faster rendering. So let's leave it at medium. The slider next to it is the model displacement scale. This controls um, how the uh, vertexes of the model are displaced. For instance, you can see that if I decrease it, the model gets thinner and as I increase it again, you can see that features are, um, are, uh, are more uh, noticeable. Let's leave this one at the middle. Okay. And uh, of course, we could change the cylinder, the, I mean the model. It's now in cylinder, and but it can be uh, uh, many, uh, many other models. Pixplant includes four built-in, but you can load um, your own model from wavefront.obg uh, files. Okay, for what we're gonna do, uh, it's better to to use um, plane the the plane model. And um, okay, so um, let's now uh, take a look at displacement and let's see what we have here. So all the um, 3D editors uh, in Pixplant uh, include two types of tools. Uh, whole image uh, tools, which um, will uh, manipulate the entire image at once, or pixel level tools, which are pretty much as the tools you'll find in a graphics editor. So they are tools for local uh, editing. They are pixel tools. Um, in this case, um, some some of the names are more related with editing a surface. So you'll see, uh, for instance, sculpt or surface tools. But um, anyway, the, the all, all tools are or the tools in all editors are divided in uh, all image tools. They're kind of like a filter filtering tools or um, pixel level tools, which are more like uh, graphics editors. Uh, uh, brushes or paint tools. Okay, so um, for instance, let's start by the all image tools, the surface tools in case of displacement, and uh, so we can equalize the the surface. For instance, uh, I think I'll just turn specular off so that we can see uh, without uh, without specular, that so that it renders without specular, which. Uh, makes it easier to to understand the image features, the surface features in this case. And uh, for instance, we, we could change the equalization level. We have five uh, levels from very fine to very large. And for instance, I will decrease um, very fine. And you can see that the image is starting to get smoother and softer. And you can see this both also here and well a little less noticeable also here um, to avoid having to to mess with all the with all the equalization sliders and uh, because the the most common case is really to slide to to decrease them like this or like that we have the equalization presets uh, slider which basically controls the other level, all, all, all the levels, all the equalization levels. For instance, you can see how smooth, how soft the surface is like this. Anyway, let's let's just leave it uh, at the middle to reset it so there's no smoothening or sharpening being done. Um, another tool uh, in the surface tools is the displacement range. It controls the minimum and maximum points in the surface. It scales the surface. For instance, you can see in the 3D preview that as I slide the value down, it gets more and more. Um, it gets it gets flatter. Okay, so uh, the default is like this. This is perhaps a bit exaggerated for the surface. Let's decrease a bit the range. And okay. And uh, now about the sculpt tools. Um, so you can see that, uh, for instance, we have some problems with the 
with your with the extracted uh, surface for instance we have this issue here uh, so let's correct it we can see in the 3d model it's that it's here you can see it's quite noticeable so let's see if we can take care of this and um, perhaps the belt we have um, we have some some tools uh, from uh, push pull sculpt uh, we have tools for smoothening to flatten the surface to roughen the surface but um, the most useful tool is most of the time clone because um, you can uh, um, pick up part of the texture from another place in the image and use it and um, and that's usually very very useful in uh, in all editors and uh, for instance here um, we can uh, we'll start by diminishing the 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 size of the brush and you can do this with shift and uh, um, moving the the cursor up or down you can see that it changes the size of the of the brush and and also the slider at uh, at here and um, so uh, and uh, with the clone tool we can uh, define um, a clone source by pressing alt the alt key or in uh, osx the option key and uh, so we set the clone source to here and then we paint so as you can see it's now fixed, it's no longer there. Uh, we could fix another one, there's another another problem here. This, te this texture was uh, generated from a small image with a with few image elements, so there are some repetitions. So it's here, and we could do the same, or um, well, we could do the same here see that it's fixing the problem and there it is okay um, so of course we have other tools uh, tools like uh, push and pull uh, for instance let's see the let's see the push tool so I can come here and decrease the slide and you can see that it's painting on the on the surface. We now created a hole there. Or we could um, uh, pull up uh, the surface, for instance. You can see what's happening. Okay, or we uh, and that's it. So let's undo this. Uh, not very nice editing. And um, okay, so let's now see the the normal uh, editor. An important thing about the displacement and normal editors is that they are both editing a common surface, a common underlying surface. Uh, so any change you do in one of the editors will uh, reflect in the other. Um, and um, um <coughs> as you can see. Uh, we also have uh, some some of the tools from displacement. Not not all of them make sense for normals, and uh, but for instance, clone is here and smooth and roughen. Um, suppose for instance we'd like to get rid of this uh, hole here, and um, you can see that uh, it's here in the surface. So let's make it more visible and um, so using the clone tool we just pick up a suitable uh, clone source and paint it okay so it's now gone um, and um, the same thing for instance the roughen tool um, Not sure we see okay so um, and this tool uh, you can use it to roughen the, the surface you can see that 
it's um, it's making it read rougher and uh, we could smooth it I'll increase the strength and so you can see that it's now making it smoother which um, has the problem of course of destroying some finer fine grain uh, texture but we can just clone change the clone tool and restore so to speak uh, the, the suitable uh, texture okay and um, uh, you may you may have noticed that um, uh, from the displacement editor and normal editor that they are um, synchronized so what you see in one you you also see in the other and this is this is happening because of the view sync checkbox at the bottom so um, all all views if this is checked all views where this is where this setting is checked uh, will update uh, in uh, in sync so if you change one the others will will also um, show the same view um, this is quite useful because um, you can untap the editors the editor windows and you can have several of them uh, displayed alongside and um, this might this this can be very useful the view sync feature um, okay so um, let's now take a look at the, the diffuse editor let's enable diffuse so you can see um, you can see sorry at the, the right that uh, we have also two, two, two kinds of tools whole image tools and the paint tools you can see here some familiar tools like paint or blur uh, flatten sharpen and uh, uh, we could for instance paint straight away and uh, you can see that it's painting in the in the surface in the model um, for the whole image tools you perhaps the most uh, uh, useful is the neutralize shading tool um, I'll, I'll just use it to take off some of the shading in the in the image and perhaps reducing the intensity now and okay it appears to have less shading now okay okay so uh, and uh, okay now on to the specular and uh, let's enable specular rendering or rendering of the specular map you can see that this is pretty exaggerated for bricks and mortar I mean uh, it's, it's, um, unless it would be a plastic um, surface kind of uh, this is a bit too exaggerated so um, we can uh, you can see that if, if we decrease intensity uh, there's the, the specular uh, component is, is going away and um, okay um, we also have here um, um, uh, a metallicness um, area <coughs> sorry where um, for instance we can uh, we can move the U around in this case it's inverting you, you can see that it uh, gets a more metallic um, reflection in this case a bit too exaggerated but anyway we can just leave it at uh, at what we at, at what it was which was what we extracted from uh, the initial texture and um, okay so perhaps we should decrease saturation because even so it's a bit it's a bit too much and in any case what we definitely need to do is change the, the intensity because this is clearly uh, still too reflective for bricks and mortar so let's remove the let's reduce the intensity and perhaps a little bit of the contrast because it's still quite reflective in the mortar 
and city hall so okay so this starts to be more real mm, perhaps a bit too much still okay so I think it's now subtle enough to and uh, suitable for the for for bricks and mortar okay okay so uh, now on to ambient occlusion and uh, I, I will enable it okay so this is really too heavy uh, anyway we we made some changes to the to displacement let's extract again no need for saving okay um, so uh, what can we do to this uh, let's try with different rate distances okay so this is perhaps too much a word about the planner planner uh, bias um, so uh, the idea is that um, as as you increase this planner surfaces will tend to to have less occlusion um, sometimes planner surfaces because they are they they might not be completely planner will uh, will get way too much ambient occlusion than than they should and this can be um, compensated um, with with this slider so Perhaps you, we have uh, we have that problem here. Not not much, anyway. Uh, on on the on the brick surfaces, well, I think we can use this one. And okay, uh, this is of course a bit too much. Still, let's try to smooth it. Or okay, so this is without, and this is with still a bit too much and let's make the map lighter okay so without and with okay I think it begins to be more reasonable okay okay very well um, so when I think this is it um, Let's change the model to see how it fits in a, in a sphere. And okay, okay, um, very well. Uh, just just one final word um, to avoid having to save all these maps. And if we would want later on to to resume editing, load them back again one by one. Pixplant has project, so we can create a project. So I'll just create a brick 25 project and um, projects save automatically. So uh, upon closing the project or opening another project, uh, it will automatically save everything, uh, all, all the linked maps. And um, this is very useful um, to, to deal with, uh, with multiple maps. Okay, and uh, so we've seen the tools included in Pixplant to edit 3D maps. Thanks for watching. For more information about Pixplant for Windows and Mac OS X, please visit uh, pixplant.com.